Welcome back, everyone. This is Kevin Wallace again. This is the first in a series of videos on a fairly new course from Cisco. It's called ICOM. ICOM, what does that stand for? It's Introducing Cisco Voice and Unified Communications Administration. That's a mouthful. It's ICOM for short. And even though it's the first version of this course, it's titled version 8.0 because Cisco is sort of normalizing their voice courses and putting everything at the 8.0 level right now. And I mentioned that this is a new course. It's specifically targeted at the voice CCNA certification. And therefore, it's replacing the older IIUC Part 1 certification. The old IIUC Part 1 would focus on things like Communications Manager Express and Unity Express and basic dial peer configuration, a little bit on the UC500 series for small business. And then students would go into the C voice course where they would start delving deeper into dial peers and digit manipulation and looking at gatekeepers. Well now Cisco has kind of re-architected the voice track and I think it's a great approach. Now we get to start out at the CCNA level with a great overview of what's available in Cisco Unified Communications. And in this video, I just want to give you the 30,000 foot overview of what this course is all about. And in future videos, we'll delve into some of the configuration and get into some of the configuration screens, maybe set some stuff up, make some phone turing. But for now, this is a brand new course. It's not just an update to an old course. So I thought it would be worth spending our first video just getting acclimated with what this course is all about. It begins with an overview of what Cisco has available for us, an overview of Cisco Unified Communications solutions. Because Cisco has several different server platforms that we can have in our communications solution. For example, we might have a router acting as a call agent. In other words, the router is making the call forwarding decisions for us. And that's called Cisco Unified Communications Manager Express, or CUCME. There's also the server-based call agent, and that's CUCM, Cisco Unified Communications Manager. In fact, we can have a grouping of those servers and have a cluster of servers for load balancing and scalability. And an IP phone can register with a Communications Manager server or a Communications Manager Express router. So those two bullets you see on the screen, the CUCME and CUCM, those are two different call agents we could select from. CUCM for larger environments, CUCME for smaller environments. For voicemail and really for unified messaging, there is Cisco Unity Connection. And also discussed later in the course is Cisco Unity Express. That's where we can have a voicemail solution built into the router. And another server that Cisco offers us is Cisco Unified Presence. Cisco Unified Presence helps coworkers work together more effectively by, for example, seeing one another's availability to communicate right now. We could see if someone is busy based on their on-hook or off-hook condition or based on their Microsoft Outlook calendar. If they're in a meeting, they could be flagged as unavailable. And the end user can run some software that integrates with Cisco Unified Presence. That software is the Cisco Unified Personal Communicator, which acts a lot like an instant messaging client. We can have a video call set up through that client. We can have an audio call set up. We can do chatting, instant messaging back and forth. We can chat with a group. We can access voicemail, our call history. We can set up a conference call. It's a very powerful software-based communications client. I almost called it a software-based phone, but it's really a lot more than just a phone. And after this course introduces you to these different platforms that are out there, we take a bit of a step back and we start to review traditional voice networks. Where did we come from and where are we going? What do converged networks look like? Converged networks, that's where we have voice and video and data all coursing through the veins of the very same network infrastructure. Of course, when you do that, when you superimpose voice on a data network, for example, you've got some quality of service considerations. We want to make sure that voice and perhaps video traffic gets treated better than some of your other data traffic. So we've got some things to think about in terms of quality of service. Next, the ICOM course introduces us to the graphical interfaces that are going to be used to integrate with these different systems. For example, there are administrative interfaces and end-user interfaces. And to give you an example, and we'll get more into this later on, but here's the Cisco Unified Communications Manager administrative interface. Notice as I hover over these different menu items, we've just got a plethora of configuration options. 
many of which are going to be covered in later voice courses such as CIPT Part 1 and CIPT Part 2. But this is the main point of administrative contact with Communications Manager. And we mentioned that we could make a router a call agent. Well, here's the administrative interface for Communications Manager Express that runs on a router. So we've got two very different administrative interfaces for these very different call agents. And one more while we're out here, how about Cisco Unity Express? Cisco Unity Express is a voicemail system that runs on a router. You literally have storage on a router, maybe on a hard drive, maybe on flash storage, but your mail store lives on your router. And this is covered in a decent amount of detail in the ICOM course. But to get back to the content of the ICOM course, after the student is introduced to these different administrative interfaces, they start to learn about call flows. For example, let's say that a call comes into a router via an analog phone and it goes across an IP network to another router and is connected to another analog phone. That represents four different call legs. You see, from the perspective of each of those routers, there's an inbound call leg as the call comes into the router, and there's an outbound call leg as the call goes out of the router. That's an example of a call flow. If we have IP phones and integrate Cisco Unified Communications Manager or Communications Manager Express, then our call flow might need to touch one of those call agents to get the call set up. So we need to understand the flow of the calls, the call legs that are involved in setting up a call, and these call flows are going to need some sort of signaling protocol. Maybe it's the skinny client control protocol, maybe it's SIP, maybe it's H.323, maybe MGCP, but we need some sort of signaling protocol to get the call set up. And then the course gets more specific about call flows with Communications Manager versus Communications Manager Express. And as we talk about each one of those environments, we talk about class of service. Now, that has a quality of service connotation, but here we're talking about call restrictions. Who can call where? Can the lobby phone call internationally, for example? We might want to restrict that. There's different ways of doing that. On Communications Manager, we're going to use something called partitions and calling search spaces, while on Communications Manager Express, we're going to use CUR, or Class of Restriction. There's different ways of setting up call routing, of giving routing intelligence to these call agents. We can set up a series of route patterns, for example, in Communications Manager, and we'll set up a series of dial peers in Communications Manager Express. The IP phones that are connecting into this network, that's what we typically think of as our endpoints. And this course gets into the characteristics of those endpoints, how to set up those endpoints. But it's not just phones that we're configuring, it's also users. Users might need to log in to, for example, subscribe their phone to a service or set their speed dials up or to set their call forward no answer destination. Well, the course gets into those topics. And in addition to making basic phone calls, of course, Cisco is going to give us lots of bonus features. It's not just basic telephony. We get a lot of extra telephony features. There are several mobility features as well that we'll talk about. For example, there is extension mobility. That's where you can go from one office to another office and log into the phone at that other office. It's kind of like roaming profiles in Windows. Have you ever logged into Windows and had your desktop wallpaper change to your wallpaper and have your icons visible? Well, that was your profile that followed you based on your login. You can do something very similar with Cisco IP phones. You can log into a phone at another site, and suddenly that phone has your speed dials. It has your directory number, your soft keys. There's also call coverage. When a call comes into your phone and you're not available, where does it go? Does it go to voicemail? Does it go somewhere else? Or maybe we set up a hunt group, maybe in a sales department. We could set up an intercom, maybe between a manager and their assistant, and with one button press on the manager's phone or the assistant's phone, they could open up a communications channel between them. And we talked earlier about the Cisco Unified Presence Server, sometimes called CUPS, C-U-P-S for short. Well, there's also a presence feature integrated into Communications Manager. It's not nearly as robust as what we get with CUPS. It's called Native Presence. And Native Presence can allow us to monitor the on-hook or the off-hook state of a watched phone, specifically a directory number on another phone, to see if they're on-hook or off-hook. And we can have that show up as a busy lamp field speed dial. We could have that show up as part of our call history as well. And in addition to lots of telephony features given to us by Communications Manager, the server platform, Communications Manager Express running on a router also has a great set of features, and ICOM gets into many of those features. 
And after you understand what's possible, the ICOM course gets into some basic configuration. This is pretty amazing to me because I've been teaching the CCVP track for years, and it's typically well into a student's studies, well into CIPT parts 1 and 2 before we get into topics such as extension mobility and setting up intercoms and native presence and call coverage. But now we're being introduced to those concepts and even seeing some basic configuration right at the CCNA level. And also the ICOM course talks about some of those Communications Manager Express features. And I mentioned that there were different types of mobility. Well, besides extension mobility, there's also Cisco Unified Mobility, which consists of two features, Mobile Connect and Mobile Voice Access. These features allow us to do things like having one number that we can put on our business card and when somebody calls that one number it's going to go maybe simultaneously to our office phone our cell phone our home phone it could ring as many as 10 different phones at the same time so we can be reachable by just one number and we can also maybe be out in our car and from our cell phone want to call a customer but we don't want to have our caller ID showing up as our cell phone we want it to be our office phone we can call a special number back at the headquarters, call into a router actually, and then say what number we want to call. We give the customer's number, and then the router on our behalf calls that customer, and when they see the caller ID, it's our office number. And there's a similar feature available in Communications Manager Express called Single Number Reach. And we mentioned that in addition to the basic call agent function, we could have a couple of extra servers. Unity Connection for voicemail, Unified Presence, which allowed us to integrate the Cisco Unified Personal Communicator and be able to work more collaboratively with our coworkers by seeing one another's status, by setting up video chats, audio calls, performing instant messaging. We could even retrieve our voicemail from this Unified Personal Communicator interface. And the ICOM course gets a bit deeper into Unity Connection and Unified Presence and talks about how we do some basic configuration and enabling of those features. And finally in ICOM, there's the discussion of how the communications manager solutions are maintained. How can we generate reports from some of these different platforms? How can we look at a history of call logs? It introduces you to a very powerful troubleshooting and monitoring tool called RTMT, the real-time monitoring tool. The ICOM course also talks about monitoring the Cisco Unity Connection voicemail solution. And Communications Manager has a very powerful disaster recovery system, the DRS. This is going to allow you to back up your Communications Manager database to either an internal tape drive or an external FTP server. And that's the basic overview, guys, of what you're going to find in the ICOM course. It shows you what's possible in the world of Cisco Unified Communications. It introduces you to some basic and maybe some not so basic configuration tasks to get phones up and working and get voicemail up and working. Of course, later courses like C Voice and CAPT Part 1, CAPT Part 2, the CAPS course, which gets more into the applications, and the T Voice course, which gets into troubleshooting voice. Obviously, you're going to go deeper in those courses, but I'm a huge fan of this brand new course that Cisco's come out with, which really gives you a vision for the future. It gives you a vision for what you're going to be covering and learning later on in your voice studies, and it gets you off and running with some basic skills. And this has just been the 30,000-foot overview again of ICOM. In upcoming videos, we're going to get into some of these different bullet points that we went through and see how to do some of the configuration that we talked about. We'll see you back for that.